Hello? Hello, everyone. Hmm. Let's see the boys here. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Mm. 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 It's not good. Ugh. A little bit of uh, lost music, so we have some background music while while I'm getting my shit set up. Uh, let's see, let's get a music. Beach boy. <clears throat> Invoicing take All right. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and cut the music, and uh, in a second here. Um, so I changed uh, gears with today's stream because uh, I had to. Um, I feel like the music's still too loud. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. I um. I had to go out and shovel around my car today, even though I live in an apartment. They uh, locked snow up my car, and I only got like a little bit done before I was like feeling it in my back and dead tired. And exactly, exactly, Nyoko. Um, and so uh, I was like, "Well, fuck this! I'm gonna have to do it later. I don't have time to do the rest of this, and I already feel like shit." So I'll come back to this and. Uh, and I hadn't realized I hadn't eaten lunch yet, so <laughs> I ordered lunch, and I got some spicy wings here. And I'm about to uh, try one of these spicy boys. These are these new spicy wings from uh, Pizza Pizza. Nothing yet. Let's try one of these spicy boys right now. Let's see how that tastes. I do have their. Classic clean donut sauce on hand, but I'm not going to use it just yet. I want to taste one of these wings just straight raw. And I think I'm going to stop the music for that. <clears throat> it's, uh... Oh, they smell amazing. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to try one of these.
Mm. That's really good. Not as spicy as I was expecting. It's still really good. Oh, they got a bit of a kick done. Hmm. I'm sure there are people who will have these and be like, those are too spicy for me. And I'm just like, these could be spicier. <laughs> So anyways, because my um, lunch was so delayed, I decided we're just going to have a bit of a chill stream today. And uh, watch some vids for a little bit. And then maybe go into Pokemon. If I do, I'll switch the title up, but I'm going to start off with a chill stream. I'm just going to check some messages. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Okay, uh, so, um, sorry, I was checking some messages. We're going to watch some Jakey with lunch. I don't think I've seen this Jakey video. This is an older one, but uh, let's watch it. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's your friendly neighborhood, Repugnant Wench, coming back at you with another hot new video game video uh, made by gamers for the video games. It's no secret that the PC gamer is a bit of a bad boy when it comes to the gaming community. You know, because 
They like to gamble. They've really learned how to how to play some proker. When there's a multi-platform release, it's more likely, there's more of a chance that the PC version of the game maybe runs like shit, maybe doesn't run at all. You know, basically like if the if the console gamer is the dean, the PC gamer is, is the Jess. I've been watching a lot of Gilmore Girls. And although there's been a lot of bad PC ports this year, that's not a new thing. Like when Grand Theft Auto 4 came out on PC, even if you had that game hooked up to a Dreamcast inside a DeLorean and it hit 88, that game still ran butt-chuggingly fucking slow. One company that has uh, definitely not been afraid to flirt with the idea of launching a broken game is Bethesda. But the thing is, review copies for their games would go out like a week or two before the game came out, so your favorite reviewer, IGN, GameSpot looking ass, would actually have time to play it and let you know before it came out, like, hey, this game has these issues at launch. This game has these weird Bethesda glitches. Which, side note, why does Bethesda always get the slack? Like, you know, even in like IGN or something in their review, they'll be like, this, this issue and this, they bring it up, but then just like, well, that's to be expected from a Bethesda game. <laughs> That's still a $60 game. They're still like big ass studio. Like why do they, when they're using this old ass engine, why do they get like this, I don't know. I've, I feel strongly about this. I'm I'm dark and moody cause I'm a Jess now. Cause I got a, I got 1070. Fight me, come on. But now Bethesda has hopped on this really shitty trend that's been happening a lot in 2016 where publishers are deciding to not give out review copies until like a day before the game comes out. And in Bethesda's review policy thing, they say something to the extent of, but Doom. We released Doom earlier this year with no uh, review copies going out like actually early and people love Doom. It's, it's a great port and they're right. Doom is a it's a beautiful game. I really, I really like Doom. But their other reasoning for making this decision is basically, it doesn't make a difference if we do it before or not. We want everyone to experience the games at the same time, which is stupidly suspicious when there's pre-order DLC incentives or when you can play the game a day early if you pre-order it, like in the case of Dishonored 2. Now the thing is, I, I expect this kind of shady behavior from someone like EA, challenge everything. But Bethesda is a company I like. Like, yeah, I was, I was bitching about how Jess isn't stoked about the performance of all their, their PC games, but like, I like their games. And one game I really liked that was published by Bethesda was the first Dishonored. And that game ran beautifully on PC. It even ran beautifully on Xbox 360. So I was stoked for Dishonored too, especially because I just got a new 1070 in the hog. It's all reloaded. I was insanely stoked for it. But when I started reading about like how Bethesda changed their review policy, I started to worry a little bit. And uh, sure enough, runs like shit. On, reportedly on console too, Dean and Jess, they're both fucking pissed. It's disappointing in practice as just like, you shouldn't do mm. that. You shouldn't have people pay $60 for your fucking game when it won't even run on a high-end rig like my own where I can barely get 60 FPS even on medium just at 1080 like that sucks that super sucks I mean that's a given that that's bullshit but when it runs with issues that are just so like this is did like, you not test this game like weird sh like just just side note this is why like I'm so afraid to like get games for pc because the pc version will usually like it not just a lot of times not even just run like shit on its own but like if you try to stream it like resident evil 8 when it came out like capcom like provided me a review copy of that game i was get or i was given a game a code for that game it ran like such ass that i couldn't play it anymore and uh if it wasn't for somebody donating the ps4 version to me uh <laughs> i never would have finished that game um i just like it when you have elements that don't um i just prefer it when there's elements that don't interact with the same machine hi sadako because if i can capture my ps4 that's externally running it's not on the pc i'm just capturing the gameplay from it it's just easier but the problem is everybody wants to get their games for PC. 
So unless the game is multiplayer, I almost have to get it for PC, especially if it's multiplayer. Shit, like it automatically sets its CPU priority to low. It has weird ass frame stuttering. The frame rate is linked to the mouse smoothing type bullshit. And you couldn't disable the mouse smoothing until they update it. Just like awful, awful shit. Plus just really tacky shit. Like the game boots up with a loading screen that it's not optional. It's like a loading screen with a bar. It's like the old GTA games on PS2, you know, they launch and they just go to the thing with the bar. It has one of those, so you wait through that, probably like around 30 seconds or something, and then it has those stupid ass intro things where it's like, made by this person, made by this person, powered by this person. Check out fucking Maple Story, but you can't skip that, <laughs> and then another loading screen, and then the fucking main menu. So on top of being a shitty PC port, cool. every time you exit the game to go fuck around with something in like the NVIDIA control Lunch panel stream. or try to find yeah. a, a way to fix this game, you have to sit through all that shit just to boot it back up to see if it runs. I mean, this is just me fucking ranting, but I, I was so disappointed by this Dishonored 2 release because it does seem like a good game, but with the performance issues it has, even after like the beta patch that I've installed, there's something about the game that just makes me sick when I play it. I play a lot of FPS games and they don't give me a headache. Like I played Titanfall 2, flirted with Mirror's Edge, Cataclysm, Warcraft, whatever it's called. And like those, those don't make me sick, those were fine. But something about Dishonored 2, just gives me the gnarliest fucking headache. I even like cranked the FOV. Maybe I need to try messing with other stuff. I even tried playing with the controller. Like, it just, it's more disappointing than like Mafia 3 was. Cause I was excited for Mafia 3, but I knew there was a chance it was gonna be butt shit. Cause it was like a new studio and there's, there's new chance. And I figured they'd like prioritize the console release. But for something like Dishonored 2, where the first game ran so good on the PC, and it was such a polished package. The fact that the second game launched like this and had shady pre-order shit going on for it, it's just, it's not cool. It's not fucking cool. And that's why there hasn't been a rap review for it, because I haven't even been fucking playing it, because it makes me sick. This week, I've just been working on album stuff, which is probably a blessing in disguise. So I guess that's me kind of apologizing that there hasn't been a video earlier, but like, sorry, there's not, there's not gonna be a fucking rap review for this, because it just, it's not, it's not fun to play it, which I know that's not the point if you're reviewing it, but I had such a personal excitement for the game and such personal disappointment and it makes me sick that it's like i just can't do it so i guess to to, to wrap wrap this up um don't pre-order games because this kind of shit happens on console 2 like the the console version of dishonor 2 isn't supposed to run good or you know even Unless potentially my favorite game of all limited. time bloodborne that launched with a bunch of issues and even though they eventually got patched, that's not cool. Like even my favorite game, I can't defend that kind of behavior of launching a broken package at launch. And I realize there's a lot of factors that go into it, pressure from the publisher and deadlines and all that shit, but whoever's in control, however high up who makes those decisions, have a little bit of, a little bit of gusto, a little bit of, a little bit of passion to deliver something that actually fucking runs. So, Fuck Bethesda, honestly. I guess that's, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, anyways, been working on a lot of music this week. Um, if this video didn't really uh, get your goat, sorry. It's just something I really wanted to talk about. But uh, I should have a music video up for next uh, track off Dead Friends soon. It's called College. Well, that's the title right now. It's a banger. So expect that. Uh, if you follow me on Snatch Chat, you've probably seen maybe some teasers. I don't remember if I've snapped them post a lot of stupid shit but uh yeah happy holidays rory fucking sucks i guess i don't know bye let me please introduce our distinguished speaker for today oh my god ads what is this shit okay there are some nicky jicky videos i have not seen like this top five things Fallout 4 messed up. Nakey Jakey's top five things Fallout 4 messed up. This is top five. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. Number five, the premise. When you start a new game in Fallout 4, you're already married. 
It's like, I don't, I don't know this dude. That ain't my baby. Whose baby is that? Because Fallout 4 starts this way, it takes away from your creativity. In most Western RPGs, you, you don't start with this already established, fully voiced character. You know, you start out making some dude, being whoever you want. I mean, being, being this chick that's buried, I'm not gonna be able to fucking make a character that's dark angel 69, ruler of the, uh... To the movie theater. I don't. I don't know. You, you can't do that. You're your housewife. You're married to this guy. You already got a baby. It's like fuck, man. I want to make my own origin story. And that's always been the difference between Western RPGs and traditional RPGs. Because in Western RPGs, it's like you make your guy. You choose what you say. You you do all that shit. But in traditional RPGs, like Final Fantasy VII, you play as Crowd and Brer it and. They, they already, they're already established, they already fucking say stuff, and that's okay, that's just a different RPG. Usually, these games, Bethesda like games, like Skyrim, Watching JK they're not, videos. they're not like that. You get what I'm saying. Number four, talking and stuff. Man, talking to dudes in Fallout 4 fucking sucks. Don't get me wrong, the voice actors for the male and female characters do a pretty fucking good job, but you never know exactly what you're gonna say. You get these super brief descriptions of what you're probably gonna say, and there's not a lot of variety in it. And there's always the fucking sarcastic choice, which isn't even that funny or sarcastic sometimes. It's like, seriously, you can't just give me a lot of those choices, like New Vegas, another fucking good game did, it's dumb. And speaking of New Vegas, it had a lot of more, like, speech options that were specific to what you mastered in, in the special system. So if you had super low intelligence, you'd say super dumb shit, and like, yeah, it didn't pop up that much, it wasn't like a huge feature, but it was fucking hilarious anytime it did, and it <laughs> made the game really unique, and it made talking to people exciting. I mean as exciting as it can be, but it was fucking cool. Number three, true evil, linearity. You can't really be evil in Fallout 4. Yeah, sometimes you get a chance to say some snarky, sarcastic shit, but there's there's not really a lot of opportunity to be evil because that would fuck up the story of the game. The, the game is about a mother or a father finding their lost son. Jason! Some evil asshole wouldn't want to do that because they'd be like, fuck that son, it's not oh, even God. mine. That's that's a white baby. I'm a black female. How does that even happen? I mean, okay, uh, yeah. In the Fallout games, you can do that. You can, you can change your ethnicity you just before you leave. shoot everyone you see. Your baby you or your dad can fucking change. try to... Oh, hi, kitty. What's up? trying to record a video. Fallout 4 is very much like a traditional RPG, like fucking Final <laughs> Fantasy 7, in terms of how it tells its story, because it's like, you, when you're not doing the story, you can go explore and dick around and hang out with Crowd and Brerit and Trifa and all those fuck boys, but when you feel like actually completing the main story, it, it'll be there waiting for you. Like, nothing nothing about it will have changed. It, it, it'll be the exact same story. I mean, and that's fine in a game like Final Fantasy where it's trying to tell its story. Like, it's clearly mapped out. It's like a movie and all that shit. But in a Western RPG like Fallout 4, you'd expect that, you know, some of the stuff you're doing when you're exploring would have an effect on the story. So, yeah, you, you can't be evil in Fallout 4 and nothing you do or very little you do, I mean, there's some stuff you can do, but very little you do affects the story, for the most part, is what I'm trying to say. I don't fucking know. <laughs> oh, Shinji Kagawa, number two, the gunplay. Is gunplay even a fucking word? So in Fallout 4, they kind of did away with basing how good you are with weapons off of the special, which, it's... It's cool because you can use all the different guns and it, it, it makes for a good game, but it kind of makes for I a I lost bad an entire RPG weekend of this game when it first came out. Roll, pray, and, and I didn't even realize you know, how much time I used. You specialize in one thing and make a really unique character. Like, I remember one of my friends was I telling me about it, how he played through all it. of New Vegas using just pistols and had created this character where he was like this outlaw, badass caravan chick. And because of how the game works, it actually let him carry out that fantasy, which, I mean... It could be a questionable fantasy, but it was cool because it, it actually let him specialize in that one thing and made his character feel really unique. And while it's cool that Fallout 4 wants to let you experience all these different things, it, it kind of sucks that the special system doesn't really 
like determine that like I mean if, if you've played Fallout 4 you know that the special doesn't really have any real significance on how you're gonna go about fighting Not dudes and speaking of, like, of fighting dudes the these kind of games combat, but like, like Fallout it's 4 better is so it's good a lot better than it was in Fallout 3 like it actually feels remotely like a first person shooter but I still think they can do better Wherever you choose to have your next yeah, adventure, adds. go with Avion and fly on Rally. any airline, yeah, any flight, this. any time. Here we go. Bethesda Grames said that they based the combat off of Bungie stuff, so like Destiny. I'm your density. And they said they mainly did that because the game runs at 30 FPS. So even when running it at 30 FPS on my PC, like purposely capping it to see what it feels like, it still feels just a tiny bit like unresponsive and laggy at times and don't get me wrong it's it like shooting stuff feels so much better without vats in this game than it did in the previous games but it still just feels like a new paint job on an old car you know what i mean that it's like i know the, the feel you can clearly tell that the game Definitely is using does. the same engine and instead of building a new car they just put some more paint on it and we're like nah it's it's a new car it's pretty look at that color it's magenta it's your favorite your mom had that car it's beautiful so it's i don't know it's good but it it could feel a little bit tighter maybe i'm just crazy i don't i don't fucking know but speaking of the engine holy okay, shit so in my country how you say uh oh num number one the engine fallout 4 is a very pretty game at times it, you know, especially the lighting. The lighting and like the rain and the shadows and them booties can look pretty good, but it's, you can tell it's using the same engine that Skyrim used. I mean, although modified, it's like, come on, dogs, it's 2015. Like, Skyrim would have been the perfect send off for that engine. And like, I understand that their development team Fucking probably used engine. the same engine and just kept modifying it because they knew like the ins and outs of it, but. Man, this is this is my top complaint for this game because it still has the exact same performance issues and stuttering and glitches and save corrupting that Fallout 3, New Vegas, and Skyrim all had before it. It's like, but that's I know you ain't broke, you ain't me, you you ain't working part time in Denver. Yeah, no, for exactly. Rent. Like, you make so much money off these games. There's not a lot of excuses for you to fucking not develop your technology better i don't know technical terms and shit they're rich as shit i know they can afford it it's 2015 this is supposed to be next gen their tagline for the game was fucking uh next generation of rpgs frontier i don't know i'll put a picture up of the quote i can't remember it but yeah they man fallout 4 it's it's a good game but it's it's a bad rpg and I love these games like I know I'm giving it a lot of hate but I I mean I was like the rest of you I played it when it came out I fucking played Fallout 3 all the time in high school I love New Vegas like I love these games and they're really fun but man Fallout 4 it's like you can do better you can do better Bethesda come on like we're all buying this shit we'll continue buying this shit but you gotta do better hey if you didn't hate that maybe you like my other videos sorry that that voice is cancer in as a person um i got other videos <laughs> and they talk about games banging they might not be as funny but it's it's intellectual gaming content for the naysayers so subscribe comment i don't fucking know love peace and chicken grease Okay, there was the his latest video on speedrunning is really great. I'm gonna open that one up. Speed. Since the dawn of humankind, we have had but one sick and twisted desire. I <laughs> must go fast. Enter the world of speedrunning, aka completing video games at the most optimal breakneck speeds imaginable. A world filled with words I like strat. Jiggy exploit RNG. like not only is jakey a great vid content creator his music is fantastic like i played at the start of every stream recently for a reason because oh, i can't wait for his album to drop it's so good what he's shown so far
Anyways, back to the video. G, frame perfect, and a little thing I like to call wearing pajamas outside of your home. Cut scenes, yes. skipped. Walking normally, as if peanut butter jiff, chunky ass. <laughs> Awkward silences. <laughs> Were you, were you gonna say something? I, I don't know. The year is no! just kidding. The year is 1977. Miles per hour. Key Games releases Drag Race into the arcade, a game that had players compete for the best time in, you guessed it, a fucking drag race. 1980, Activision rips it off for the Atari and calls it Dragster. Whoa, wow, how'd you think of that name? And Dragster is commonly cited as one of the first documented cases of competitive speed run. 1982, this guy Todd Rogers claims he gets a 5.51 record time in Dragster and holds the Guinness Book of World Records record for like 30 years until people dissect the code of the game in 2018 and find out that it's literally impossible to get anything faster than a 5.57? Wait, 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 what the f***? So you're telling me he cheated and lied? But... But I thought people were awesome. Nope, people suck, and there's gonna be a lot more cheaters too, and also a terrible video game called The Cheetah Men and a Disney Channel called The Cheetah Girl. 1986, Metroid drops in as one of the first non-speed focused <laughs> games that still incentivize speedy gamers to complete it as fast as possible by rewarding gamers, classic move, with a couple of these. <laughs> yeah, I'm a gamer. Well, I'm Not smashing because I don't have chat. a life, but because I choose to live mini. 1993, Doom <laughs> drops, and Doom is the reason speedrunning exists as we know it. Doom changed everything. Because not only does Doom have guns, and ghouls, and goblins, and little gerbils with machine guns, and an in-game timer, but Doom also has a built-in replay function where you can save demo files of your gameplay called lumps, aka .lmps, to watch later in-game. Basically think like Halo 3 theater mode, but like 14 years before that, which is completely crazy. Frog. And speedrunners can share those little mountain lump files online as proof that they're not cheaters and that people are awesome. Yes! Yes! I fucking knew it! I knew they were awesome! Jesus Christ, dude. Doom is responsible for so many things. First person shooters, deathmatch multiplayer, speedrunning, uh, Fifel Goes West, an American Tale, Flushed Away, Ratatouille. 1994 Super Metroid drops, and this game is practically on its hands and knees begging you, please! Please, somebody speedrun me for the love of God! Oh, suck your- Containing a more open structure, advanced movement techniques like wall jumping, an in-game timer, some more of these, because I'm a gamer. <laughs> Not because I don't have a wife, but because I've never smelled one. 1996, Doom gives birth to a massive, chunky baby named Quake, and the speedrunning community that began with Doom just continues to blossom and grow with her grotesque, massive 3D polygonal sun. 1997, Nolan and Radix creates Nightmare Speed Demos, a site dedicated to speed demos of Quake, but only on the Nightmare difficulty, hence the name Nightmare Speed Demos. In case that was difficult to understand, here's a graph I made. Later in 1997, Nolan Radix and fellow speedrunners put together Quake Done Quick, a compilation of the fastest records for each level in Quake played on the Nightmare difficulty, but uh, stitched together as if a person was playing through the whole game in one go while freebasing NOS. Quake Done Quick gets shared around different corners of the internet and even some PC gaming Junkish magazines. Speed, baby. And is a lot of gamers' first exposure to the ever-growing world of not wearing a lot of deodorant. But some other gamers in the Quake community, also known as Quakers, didn't want to run on Nightmare Mode and instead wanted to run on Easy Mode and just focus on going as fast as possible. So these Quakers made their own websites. 1998, Radix merges his freaky Nightmare site with a growing Easy Mode site and bada boom bada bing, Dobby and Gollum have entered the ring. Speed Demos Archive is born, which quickly becomes the sole hub for watching gamers go absolutely Quasi on Quake. Essentially, much like Doom, Quake is really important and is super responsible for not only the growth of online speedrunning communities, but also 3D FPS games like Half-Life, online multiplayer in esports, uh, community mods, Stuart Little, uh, Rat Rat. 2003, anonymous speedrunner <laughs> under the nickname Morimoto uploads an impeccably perfect and speedy playthrough of Super Mario Bros. 3 to the internet, and a lot of people are like, whoa, Willers, this is fing crazy, I'm peeing my pants. And while this video would introduce a lot of people to the concept of speedrunning surprise bitch think again because you just got TAS. TAS or tool <laughs> assisted speedrun basically means that you play through the game using an emulator and by using save states and other wizardry you make it appear as if you are the Michael Jorgen of Mario when in reality you're not even really the Michael Wazinki. Which is cool for seeing what's potentially possible in a game for actual speedrunners yeah, but no. also adds a lot of fuel insane. to the ongoing war between uh, loser cheater bags of dog shit and people who are actually awesome and do NOS on top of cars. Also in 2003, <laughs> Radix uploads his own personal speedrun of Metroid Prime to Speed Demo's archive, and after it gets a lot of traffic and attention, he says, you know what, screw it, and opens up 
speed demos archive to speedruns of all sorts of games, not just Doom or Quake, like Ocarina of Time and GoldenEye 007 and Mario Kart 64 and Super Mario 64 and My Dad's a Dentist 64. I've wanted that game to come out for a hundred years. <laughs> and there's even different categories of speedruns, like any percent runs, which basically means just getting to the end credits as quickly as possible by any means necessary, even if it means using glitches and exploits to just teleport to the end of the game in under like 20 minutes. Or 100% runs, which means completing everything in the game to 100% completion, which I'm sure you pieced together when I said 100%. In case that wasn't clear, here's a graph, here's another graph. You know, four hours might not be the first thing that comes to mind when I say the word speedrun, but when beating Ocarina of Time usually takes you like three years, suddenly four hours feels like you're right on the raceway to Talladega. Ow! Okay, so the year is 2007. Everyone's trying to get a Wii. Everyone's confused by the iPhone. Barack, he's given the Oval Office the stinky eye. And meanwhile on the internet, live streaming is slowly starting to rear its streamy head with sites like like Ustream and Justin TV, which would later give us Twitch TV in 2011, I don't know, maybe you've heard of it, and speedrunners are definitely taking notice. 2010, a group of speedrunners from the website speeddemoarchives.com, remember that website from earlier, well, they decided to take a hint from the speed gamers and hold a speedrunning charity marathon event of their own, and they called it Classic Games Done Quick, a reference to that Quake compilation video from earlier, Quake Done Quick, oh my god, it's like everything is connected and everyone's gonna fall in love at the end. Starting in 2011, Awesome Games Done Quick or AGDQ and its companion summer event, Summer Games Done Quick or SGDQ, uh, have been held every year since. And if you've heard of speedrunning before Just clicking finished. on this obnoxious and terrible AGDQ. video, GDQ is probably a big reason for that. Streamed live on Twitch for a week straight, GDQ is non-stop, 24-7 speedrunning madness. I mean, if you want to see gamers go absolutely sacrilegious on some freaky, demented shit, look no further. Want to see your favorite game that took you like seven centuries to beat get farted on by a pro gamer in like 30 minutes while simultaneously explaining to you how and why? Like, Okay, so basically right here, I'm going to use the item swap glitch I talked about earlier to frame perfect teleport Cranky Kong into the final dance scene. Okay, Cranky Kong is in the final dance scenario. He's okay. He pulled out the shovel and three, two, one. Okay. He bonked the last boss on the head. That's time. All of your girlfriends are now pregnant. And uh, check your Bank of America account because it should oh, be drained. Right. In 2014, AGDQ raised over a million dollars for Prevent Cancer Foundation. Doubling that in 2017 and tripling that in 2020. A three million dollar fart on cancer, all because humans are sick, twisted, and goddamn it, beautiful psychos that just want to go fast. And yeah, sometimes that might involve being extremely oh awkward, but it also involves one very important Ridicodemics. passion. While GDQ grew bigger and bigger I actually every know that year dude. since the birth of Twitch, that dude. gaining more and more viewers, speedrunning oh and speedrunning streamers grew along with it. And even if some people will cheat and lie and do whatever it takes to get some world record in some random game. A lot of other people actually are amazing. The borderline computer android ass level of inhuman perfection and precision yeah, my pal FCR to pull some of this shit off of is nothing short Not of this astounding. Year, yes. It is fucking poetry moving at 60 frames per second and maybe also sometimes nine frames per second if it's golden eye. Speedrunning, in a lot of ways, reminds me of skateboarding. And not just because I'm dog shit at both of them. It's because both hobbies require that you fail at the same thing over and over and over and over again before you can even get a tiny bit close to achieving your goal. Both hobbies require intense mindfulness and focus and control over what your body is physically capable of doing. Both hobbies have a strong sense of community where you can feel that your peers just want you to succeed and push yourself and break new ground. Same, and I they both make GDQ people act like around. tiny little babies and have little pissy fits. <laughs> Although I am neither a professional gamer that works at GameStop or a professional skateboarder that works at GameStop, I greatly <laughs> admire those that are employed by their local GameStop because it is an absolute gift to be able to witness what they are capable of achieving while freebasing NOS. The current state of speedrunning fucking rules, at least coming from an avid fan and dumbass viewer. Because nowadays, there seems to be a speedrunning community for any game imaginable. Speedrunning has become so commonplace that even IGN is getting in on the action with their Devs React to Speedrun series, which is the best idea they've had since the 9 out of 10 review score. Whether it's a AAA game, indie game, Game Boy game, Flash game, Wikipedia page, people are probably speedrunning it. And if you've yeah. ever played a video game, you should mm -hmm. definitely check out a Speed, speed run getting going banned. Fast there was a speed running category fast. for getting banned from 
the Underage Devs Discord uh, server. That's all I got. Um, if you want more speedrunning content in your life, shout out Summoning Salt, shout out Carl Jost, uh, shout out running really fast at a door in real life. Now please stay tuned for a word from today's sponsor. <laughs> Just kidding, it's me. I'm today's sponsor. If you're watching this video, then that means my album comes out very soon. Uh, I worked very hard on those songs. Some of them have even been in the oven since before I had a YouTube channel, and I really hope you like them. That being said, if they're so not excited. good, bully me. And if they are good, bully me too, because I'm just, just a sick little bitch like that. Anyways, uh, per usual, thanks for giving even the tiniest bit of shit about me. I uh, appreciate you watching this video, checking, checking me out. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> also, everyone say thanks to my girlfriend, Claire, for letting me record this video in her apartment. Thanks, Claire. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh. You were the speediest, you were Sonic the whole time. Hi from my Viva. <laughs> the sun is really nice oh right now. Oh my god, it's so bright. Oh my god, sun's so <laughs> they are. <laughs> oh my god, our beef is crazy this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hmm. The good news is I've almost finished lunch. You know what? Five to four. Wow. <laughs> Consumed the food. Yes, pretty much. Um, okay, so... I'm gonna need just like a just like a little bit. I've gotta take care of something real quick. Uh but then I'm gonna pop the game on and we're gonna do some of that. So um I will be right back and uh we'll get to that soon. So I'm gonna pop on some Jakey for you for you guys to enjoy. By Jakey I mean music, because you guys saw the uh so the videos now I'm gonna pop on some some of his music and uh, when I come back we'll do some pogey man so yeah I had the cat has consumed food yes you know go coming in with the with the the pickle pickle the emotes fuck <laughs> today's a day um i'm not looking forward to shoveling in like two hours <laughs> let's just say that uh <laughs> okay all right all right i'm gonna hook you guys up with some jakey um and then uh i will be back and we'll do some pogeymans so uh be right back.